how do you see the House and the Senate closing this gap with Speaker Johnson's only Israel package? Well, listen, uh, Speaker Johnson has to get it past the House, and, uh, and I, I support whatever he tries to do. I'd rather see the two uh, combined because we have the obligation to Ukraine just like we have the obligation to Israel. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that Ukraine is tied to the Budapest Memorandum that we signed in 1994 that basically told, not basically, it did say if Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons, we would be there in the event that they were invaded specifically for Russia. So that Budapest memorandum doesn't expire. Uh, and we also have a strong ally in Israel that we agreed to be there in the event that they were attacked too. And so we have dual obligations and, and, and we, that's including us and, and all of our listening uh, audience, that we're only as good as our word. And America said we're going to be there for Israel. America said we're going to be there for Ukraine, and therefore we need to be there for them both. However, if Speaker Johnson can only get Israel package done and he needs to uh, go at Ukraine differently, then, you know, whatever he can get done, that's his chamber. He's got to have the, the, uh, the runway to do what he can. And then uh, in the mm -hmm. Senate, um, led by Chuck Schumer, he's uh, going to do what he's going to do, and hopefully we can get a bill that can both get signed and into law. Well, we heard from uh, Mitch McConnell on this, and I, I suspect that you see eye to eye uh, with your Republican leader in the Senate making the case not only for Israel, but Ukraine. And he used the word intertwined. I'd love for you to listen to what he said, and we'll have you respond. The threats facing America and our allies are serious, and they're intertwined. If we ignore that fact, we do so at our own peril. The Biden administration's defense budget requests have systematically ignored these growing threats. The president's supplemental request to address multiple crises that have unfolded on his watch is a recognition of this failure. Senator, I know you serve on the Armed Services Committee, and I wonder right. if you could take that a step further and, and tell our viewers and listeners why that money for Ukraine is important, not only for Ukraine, but for the U.S. here in terms of shoring up our defense industrial base and restocking supplies in the U.S. You know more about this than most people, and we're hearing a lot of confused statements when it comes to this money. Yeah, let, let's un, this is a lot what uh, uh, Leader Schumer said, and so let's unpack a little bit about him saying that it was intertwined, and that will help the defense industry understand this, too is, you know, intertwined by mean our, our uh, enemies are checking America's resolve right now. Make no mistake that Iran, Russia, North Korea, and China, they're an alliance together, and they're trying to see what the resolve of America is. Are we still that same superpower that when we say something, we're going to do it? Um, or are we about appeasement now? Peace through strength is what Reagan said. Peace through strength is what, Ray, uh, what Trump portrayed. And uh, we haven't necessarily seen that underneath the Biden administration. It's been more about appeasement. They say a lot of times the strong words, but actions are where the truth lies, not words. And so when you start looking at uh, the defense industry too, the defense industry plays a big role in this, right? So we're, we're supplying Ukraine not with human assets, which is, you know, troops on the ground, we're supplying them with munitions. Those munitions we have to replenish. And a big part of the Ukrainian package is replenishing the munitions that we have spent. Now, the munitions that we're sending over to Ukraine were um, due to expire. If you're in McAllister, Oklahoma at noon, Monday through Friday, you hear explosions. It sounds like, um, it, it sounds like a thunder going off. But what we're doing is we're detonating expiring munitions. And those, before they expire, we have been sending them to Ukraine. But at sometimes the stockpile, you have to dig into a little bit farther than just the ones that are expiring. And that's what we've done now. And we've got to replenish that. And that is exactly what a lot of this Ukraine aid does. In fact, over half of it goes to replenishing our munitions for our own self. You've mentioned the case that you want to make to the American people. But what is the case, and you are a self-described mentor, to Speaker Johnson, what's the case you're making to him? You're known oh, as this whisperer in the yeah, House. I, he he voted yeah. against $300 million to Ukraine that the United States has been sending for years, even under the Trump administration. He voted against that $300 million. So how can you convince him to send billions more to Kiev? Right. Well, now, I, I, I don't claim to be his mentor. I was his mentor when he first came in, and that may have been a big negative for him. I'm not saying that's a positive for him. It's just kind of a, a, a bragging point to me that Mike's a good guy. 
he's sincere, he's honest as he can be, and he's a very astute to, to uh, legislation. I consider him a real strong policy guy. Uh, as far as his vote uh, against Ukraine funding, I don't know exactly what his thinking was on that. I haven't spoke to him. I'm sure he has a reason because he is, he is, he, he's very good at the details. Uh, and him and I have never sat down and spoke about it. So I really can't answer or, or uh, to why he did it because we haven't had the conversation. I have to ask you uh, as well, Senator, about some comments you made that went viral a couple of weeks back about Congressman Matt Gates. This was during the whole process that led yeah. to the ouster of Kevin McCarthy. Few of us can forget what you said, uh, referring to him uh, telling stories about his exploits with women, showing other lawmakers right. videos. Is that kind of behavior going to continue under this new speaker? You know, I don't, I hope not under Matt Gates. Uh, as I said there, by the way, that was before he was married. Uh, but Matt Gates is, he's not a policy guy or a principal individual. It's about self promotion. And I stand by those comments 100%. In fact, what Matt came out in his defense was, hey, uh, I haven't said more than 20 words to, to Mark Wayne. That's absolute false. But he can't deny what he did. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if there's other people out there that could complain, that could claim the same thing. In fact, there was a story that came out about it at the same time. And so I, I, don't, think, uh, I, I don't think Mike Johnson, Speaker Johnson, will tolerate that one little bit. Uh, but it should never be tolerated. There's no room for that ever in the chamber. Uh, but, you know, Matt, Matt is this individual that said a lot of stuff that goes way too far, uh, but he portrays himself as somebody he's really not. And, and, and when, guy does, when someone does that, they need to be exposed to who they really are because that's the real side of Matt, not this one that's portraying himself to be some, you know, special individual that's real good and he's trying to watch out for America's yeah. interests. Matt Gates is about watching out for himself and that's it. Should he be expelled? You know, that's no, that's up to his voters. Uh, he, he was elected by uh, uh, by his constituents and let his constituents decide that when he goes when they go to the polls next year. I will assume he'll probably be reelected. He's popular in his own district, but I don't think they would if they actually knew the real Matt Gates.